Well, construction equipment OEMs have been quite slow to adapt uh, telemetry because of several reasons. And I think the key reason is that the market um, is very traditional. So customers really focus on more on the equipment itself to, to get the job done. So really uh, a steel, cast steel focus and uh, more on the machine itself and not around the services. Um, and also it has been not really a push from the, from the market to have telematics installed off, off fabric. Um, so that's one of the key reasons why OEMs did not really feel the, the push to actually start implementing uh, telematics. If you look at other industries such as um, the trucks or commercial vehicles and automotive, they started back in the 90s with implementing telematics on their vehicles. And you can see that it has drawn a lot of benefits because they are far ahead of, of construction equipment nowadays. And as a lot of reports um, actually state, such as uh, the McKinsey report of last year, that actually construction equipment is in the 24th position of 25 industries that actually adopt telematics. And well, I think that's uh, quite a clear statement that construction equipment has quite a way to go. Um, and also has displayed uh, last week or uh, this week on the Conexpo in Las Vegas, it's really, they try to center telematic services and services, aftermarket services, but it's not getting really off the ground yet. They just want the machine working and everything around it, they don't want to take care of. So they just want the operator on the machine, get the job done, move the dirt from A to B, and all the telematics is um, not relevant to them at the moment. Um, so that's why we see maybe there should be kind of a service provider around telematics that can actually take that out of the customer's hand and provide it for them. Provide all the services, do all the um, back-end stuff and all the analytics that needs to be done to actually get value out of telematics for end customers. Um, the business models, yeah, that's exactly the point around a traditional um, customer market is that you really um, see the tendency of customers to, to just have like a one-time payment for their machines and not really innovative business models that we, we see in other industries like uh, paper usage, power by the hour or software as a, software as a service models um, where OEMs actually charge in different ways, subscription models for, for example and which have not really been taking off uh, very well in the construction equipment segment. But you can see that a lot of OEMs are testing these concepts with, with bigger accounts and they are trying to, to lift this and leverage on other industries' experience, um, which is really key for telematics actually to succeed because telematics does not really fit into the traditional business models. It's not that you pay a one-time fee for, for telematics and then you get all the, the fruits, so to say, from, from telematics. And also the, the benefits of telematics are not always that tangible as buying a machine. So they really need to adopt their, their way of selling and marketing telematics to be able to uh, implement it in a correct way. How do you sell services that are not tangible? This is what the construction equipment industry has been very used to, buying tangible products. You can see the machine and this is the value of the machine and that's what you buy. So coming in with services that are not, you cannot see and you cannot take with you are hard to value in this industry. So we really need to focus on how can you make the services tangible and valuable for, for customers. So the, the risk that is taken by the different um, chains in, in the distribution chain, such as the distributor, the rental companies, the OEM itself, and then probably some of their third party suppliers, um, it's really a key question who's going to take the financial risk and also who's going to take the operational side of implementing telematics and that's also affecting the business model a lot. So who's going to charge whom and in which kind of model is it being charged and who's taking the responsibility of actually delivering the service belonging towards the telematics to, to the end customer. So today the traditional model is that you have an OEM who either has their own internal organization to provide telematics or a third party and then they supply the machines towards uh, a rental company, a big key account, or towards the dealerships. And from there on, they supply it towards the end customers. So there are um, like two chains in between who also have to deal with telematics. And then it's really the key question, who's going to take the responsibility of actually delivering the advantages of telematics towards the end customer? The diverse markets that's really focusing on the different segments or industries actually that construction equipment is serving. So if we look at the, the wide range of activities that are being performed with construction equipment machinery such as uh, forestry, waste handling, uh, recycling, uh, quarries, mining, etc. It's all kind of different customers that are actually performing different activities and need different support in their daily activities. 
and which can be done via telematics, but you really need a kind of a tailor-made solution in some way to support these different segments, which makes it really hard for construction equipment industries to actually deliver these services. The end of um, like the, the top in, in the economical uh, performance back in 2006, 7, um, the market prices for construction equipment were really uh, skyrocketing. And then the OEMs were like, okay, we cannot keep uh, pushing the boundary, so we, we need to deliver additional features. So some of the OEMs uh, implemented telematics, but not from a market push, but more from like a technology push, which is, in my opinion, the wrong, wrong approach. Telematics should be implemented because there is a demand from a customer perspective and there is a kind of a pain that needs to be resolved. And if you take it telematics from that approach, then you can, in a segmented way, actually build your telematics services, which has not been done in the, in the past. So that's uh, one of the, the first points, I think, is like the traditional market that they um, either they don't have the maybe the knowledge in-house to, to work with the advanced services that telematics has to offer, or they don't really uh, uh, know how to scale the operations and I think uh, they need, need support in uh, actually utilizing the benefits of telematics. So it's indeed um, that the customers, that there has not been a real push. You see it more and more that uh, customers are opening up that they uh, need support in, in, in a remote way um, to utilize their machine, machines in a correct way. But it has not been like that for a long, long time. I think uh, as an industry we really need to, to open up and um, also look at uh, options to, to co-create, to share benefits openly towards end customers and work directly with them to develop services that can support their daily activities. Um, today and the last 10 years the most services have been made like in-house from an OEM perspective. So really from the technology push. Um, yeah, which can come over to customers that something that is not necessarily needed from their side. So it's really important that uh, customers are being tied into the development chain and that their voice is being heard in, uh, in the development of telematic services.